In this video, I will accomplish three things. A, I will address the proclamation made by many online experts that this antenna is nothing but junk and is no more than a fancy dummy load. Two, I will compare the performance of this antenna to two other very popular GMRS mobile antennas. And three, I will not try to impress you like so many other YouTubers would do by using fancy technical jargon or big words. Instead, I will use easy to understand common language for the common man or woman. The reason I am making this video is because many online experts continue to spread vicious, ugly, scandalous rumors about so-called ghost antennas, such as this one. And they're not talking just about the Midland ghost antenna. They are referring to all ghost antennas. Many of these experts proclaiming while basking in their self-glorified puddles of expertise, proclaiming that a ghost antenna is nothing more than a dummy load. A dummy load, for those of you that are not radio experts, is what you use to test a radio's power output. It is basically a heat sink that you connect to your radio and it absorbs all of the RF electricities coming out of a radio without transmitting those RF electricities into the air any more than just a few feet. Using a dummy load allows you to take a good measurement of power coming out of a radio without bothering anyone that might be listening on the same frequency. Because a dummy load does not transmit RF electricities very well, if at all, a dummy load is basically an antenna. Antenna. So when an expert compares a ghost antenna to a dummy load, what they are saying is a ghost antenna isn't really an antenna and you cannot transmit any FARs if you are using one. So to see if this is true or if those experts are full of shit, I will compare this ghost antenna I will compare this ghost antenna to two very popular mobile GMRS antennas. The first being the king of mobile GMRS antennas, the Nagoya UT72G mobile GMRS antenna. Nagoya antennas are often recommended by the experts as the best antennas you can buy. And the Midland MXTA26 mobile GMRS antenna, which is the very antenna that I use on my Jeep. The Midland MXTA25 Ghost antenna is a 3 dB gain antenna. It is very small at just under 4 inches in height and it is very rugged, so it is perfect for attaching to a Jeep or overlanding machine because you don't have to worry about it getting torn off by bushes or by the roof of the McDonald's drive through And this is the antenna that many experts proclaim does not work or works very poorly, no better than a dummy load. Now, one very important thing to remember about this antenna or any ghost antenna, not just the Midland ghost antenna, is that because a ghost antenna is so small, if you mount this antenna in a poor location, where parts of the vehicle are blocking the RF electricities, where a taller antenna might reach above whatever is blocking those RF electricities, it ain't gonna work. So what I am saying is, always mount your antennas in a good spot on your vehicle, free of any obstructions. 
The MXTA Ghost Antenna costs $49. Affiliate link below. As previously mentioned, I will be comparing the Ghost Antenna to two other antennas. The first being the Midland MXTA 26 antenna. The Midland MXTA 26 is a 6 dB gain antenna, and this is the antenna that I use on my Jeep. And the MXTA 26 antenna costs $60. Affiliate link below. And I will also compare the Ghost Antenna to the Nagoya UT-72G mobile GMRS antenna. The Nagoya UT-72G is a 3 dBi gain antenna. And allow me to point out that dBi is different from dB as measured by the previous two antennas. It is a different way of measuring RF electricities, and I do not know what 3 dBi translates into in dB. And even though I don't really care, I'm sure that some expert will leave a 10 paragraph long comment to not only let us know the answer to that, but also telling us how to make the calculation along with the entire history of dB versus dBi as methods of measuring antennas. And the Nagoya UT-72G costs $35. Affiliate link below. All three of these antennas are GMRS antennas, so they are pre-tuned for GMRS, meaning that you can use them right out of the box with no tuning or cutting required. If you were to analyze all three of these antennas on a fancy antenna analyzer, which I have done, you would find that the Nagoya and the Midland antenna are both fairly well tuned for the middle of the GMRS frequency spectrum with both exhibiting their best performance somewhere between the 462 and 467 megahertz range. Oh, I'm sorry. It has been pointed out to me that I have been pronouncing that word wrong. The proper way to say it is not megahertz. I feel like such a fool for saying it wrong all this time. The correct way to say it is not megahertz. The correct way to say it is my giggle hurts. So both of these antennas are well tuned for between 462 and 467 my giggle hurts, which is perfect for GMRS. However, when analyzing the ghost antenna, I find that it is best tuned for about 467 my giggle hurts, which is at the very high end of the GMRS range. And many experts often point to this as proof that a ghost antenna does not work on GMRS. But when they say this, what they are so desperately trying to say, but are apparently incapable of expressing, is that the antenna works best at 467 my gigahertz with an SWR of about 1.4 to 1 at that frequency. However, in the rest of the GMRS range, the SWR is around 2 or 2.5 to 1, which is still perfectly acceptable and plenty good enough for normal people. Now, please allow me to take another moment to point out that those measurements I just mentioned were done on these specific antennas. And due to the vagaries of manufacturing techniques and poor quality control, no two antennas will be exactly the same. And my measurements were also done with a good ground plane and in perfect conditions. And never forget that in the real world, how and where an antenna is mounted will greatly affect both the SWR and the performance of the antenna. So let us now focus our attention on how these three antennas actually perform in the real world, both receiving and transmitting, when compared to each other in identical conditions, almost like a scientific test. First, I will compare how well each of these antennas can receive a signal. And to do that, I will use my SDR, which is what you are looking at right now. This will allow us to see and accurately measure the RF electricity strength instead of just relying on the noise input holes on the side of our heads. So as you can see, the dB scale on the left goes from negative 20 at the top, which would be a very strong signal, to negative 70 at the bottom, which would be a very weak signal. So the taller the signal, the stronger the RF electricities are. 
And below that, we also have the RF Electricity's speedometer that will make it very easy to visualize with your eye holes how strong the RF Electricity's are being received. And just like when you're driving your car, the further to the right the needle goes, the more manly you are. And to help me with this almost scientific test, I have my friend Chris at his house 10 miles away and in near perfect line of sight from me. That means there are no hills, no trees, and no houses full of fat people between us to block the RF electricities. The only thing between Chris and me is air and rainbows. First, we will test how well each of these three antennas can receive a weak signal. So Chris will transmit from his walkie-talkie radio while we observe the signal strength on the screen for each different antenna. Chris will be transmitting on his walkie-talkie with the small walkie-talkie antenna, and the SDR will be receiving his signals using each of the three different antennas. And sadly, Chris will not be saying any words when he transmits. Instead, he will be dead keying. This way, the signal will be flat and steady, and easier to measure. And what you are seeing now is how well the Nagoya UT-72G is receiving Chris's signal from 10 miles away. As you can see, the signals are peaking at around minus 64 or minus 65 dB. Next, we will see how the Midland MXTA 26 antenna, the same antenna that I use on my Jeep, we will see how well it picks up Chris's signal. And as you can see, it peaks at about minus 63 or minus 64 dB, which is barely one or two dB better, better than the Nagoya, but not a whole lot different. And finally, the ghost antenna, the very antenna that the experts proclaim does not work. And if you look closely, you will see that the ghost antenna peaks at about minus 65 or minus 66 dB. So in case you were not able to follow along, the Midland MXTA 26 antenna, the antenna that I use on my Jeep, is able to pick up Chris's weak RF electricities slightly better than the Nagoya or the Ghost antenna. And now, to test how well each of these antennas can transmit, Chris will attach each one of these antennas to his radio one at a time. And Chris will then transmit from his 5 watt radio with each different antenna so we can measure how effectively each antenna can squirt the RF electricities from 10 miles away. I will be receiving Chris's transmissions on my SDR, which is connected to a large 10 dB gain base station antenna. And just like before, we will measure the signal strength of each antenna while Chris is transmitting. And that will demonstrate how effectively each antenna can squirt RF electricities, proving once and for all if the ghost antenna is junk and does not work at all, as so many experts have proclaimed. So let us now see how strong Chris's signal is when he transmits on the Nagoya antenna. And as you just saw, the signal strength when transmitting on the Nagoya UT-72G was minus 62 or minus 63 dB. Next, Chris will transmit on the Midland MXTA-26 antenna, the very antenna that I use on my Jeep. And as you can see, if you're paying attention, the Midland MXTA-26 is hitting the meter at about minus 50 or minus 51 dB, and that is almost 10 dB better than the Nagoya UT-72G, a huge and surprising difference. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, Chris will transmit on the Midland MXTA-25 Ghost Antenna, the very antenna that the online experts claim does not work and is basically nothing more than a non-functioning dummy load. According to all those experts, it would be impossible to even receive a 5-watt signal from this antenna at 10 miles away. So let's see what happens. And as you can see with your very own eye holes, the ghost antenna is coming in at minus 51 or 52 dB, virtually the same as the larger MXTA 26 antenna, and almost 10 dB better, better, than the Nagoya antenna. So my friend, the one thing that this proves is three things. Number one, the experts and comment kings are idiots and should always be ignored. B, 
the performance of the Nagoya antenna, the antenna praised by the online comment experts as one of the best antennas you can buy, was very disappointing. And three, this small antenna is not just a dummy load.